Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series on quantum statistics, video number 18, and this is the equal partition theorem. I suggest the previous videos on this are the Boltzmann factor and the partition function. So, I'm going to do this reasonably quickly because all I'm doing is applying the results we've seen in previous videos. So, the equal partition theorem says there's one half k times t uh, kinetic energy per degree of freedom. That means if you have n degrees of freedom, you have one half n k t kinetic energy in your system. Alright, and that's what we're going to prove. However, the important thing is here is to work out where this applies. And I'm going to tell you it only applies where your system stores energy quadratically. That means we'll say E of Q is equal to C Q squared. Q can be anything, it can be potential energy, it can be momentum, velocity, you name it. However, it must store it quadratically. Alright? And you'll find that many classical systems do this because the equipartition theorem is used in many places. So we'll say um Let's move on from there. Now, in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that the average energy of any system is equal to 1 over the partition theorem times del del beta of the parti or partition function of the partition function here. So, that is something which I haven't proved in the video yet, but I will do in a future video. And it's a very important and useful quantity or um, formula. So that means we need to get the partition function for this particular system. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know that the partition function z is equal to the sum of the Boltzmann factors. Okay, but we also know that in this case we store the energy quadratically. So it's e to the minus c q squared over kt. But we're going to use the thermodynamic beta, which is 1 over kt. So that's what z is. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a small bit of cheating. In order to evaluate this particular sum, we're going to multiply by delta Q inside and outside the sum, or inside the sum, excuse me, and divide by delta Q outside the sum. So like I said, it, it is a small bit of cheating. So I'm actually going to do it straight away here. So we're going to have 1 over delta Q, and we're going to have delta Q here. Right? There, like that. Now, this particular sum here, can be interpreted as the area under a bar graph. So let's say that there's our bar graph, okay, and here are all our, all our delta Qs. The area under a bar graph whose height is determined by the Boltzmann factor, and since the delta Q is very small, we can approximate the bar graph by a smooth curve, changing the sum into an integral, which is exactly what we're going to do. So once again, to conserve some space, I'm just going to delete that straight away. The integral is from negative to positive infinity, and instead of delta Q, we now have the total derivative dQ. Okay, so now what we're going to do is in a, we're going to carry out this integral. Now, you've probably seen integrals like this before. They're difficult, and the only way to do them is by substitution, and they're called Gaussian integrals. They're called Gaussian integrals. So, like I said, I have no intention of, of grinding through the mathematics here. So the substitution I suggest that you make is that x is equal to the square root of the argument up here, which means that x is equal to the square root of beta c times q, or that dx is equal to 1 over the square root, uh, that's the square root of beta c times uh, dq. If you make that substitution, you will change this integral into a very recognizable format. So it's very straightforward, and what you'll get is that z is equal to, uh, you're going to get 1 over delta q, you're going to get 1 over square root b to c, you're going to get your integral e to the minus x squared dx. And this is a Gaussian integral, the, the value of this integral here is square root pi. If you haven't seen it before, the fact that this integral is act, turns out to be the square root of pi should tell you that it's some sort of a special integral. Alright, so let's get rid of the integral and put in the answer, which is square root pi. Like that. Alright, so now we have the partition function. So in order to evaluate our average energy, we need the derivative of the partition function with respect to beta. So how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to call alpha. I'm going to be alpha, let alpha be everything else. So alpha is going to be the square root of pi, the square root of c, like this. 
and it's also going to be 1 over delta q. Okay, so that if we if we make that particular substitution, then what we have is alpha over square root beta. Okay, alpha over square root beta. That's pretty straightforward. So if you carry out this particular um, derivative, if we get del del beta of z, we're going to get alpha del del beta of square root beta. Okay, and that's going to be equal to, therefore, when we plug, when we, we'll take, let's leave that there. The next thing we need, of course, is that we need to multiply by minus 1 over z, or 1 over z like this. So this becomes minus 1 over z as well. I'm just showing you the steps, like I said. So that means the, this, this whole thing here is the average energy, and the average energy turns out then to be minus 1 over z times alpha times minus a half beta to the minus 3 over 2. Okay, because that's the, the derivative here. Is, is it, That's the derivative there. All right. So I'm going to let you plug in alpha. You plug, the, plug in them all, and you're going to be able to do some cancellations. So just for completeness, I'm going to write out all the bits and pieces that I had. So this is quite long and you don't need to, you don't need this I suppose really. So alpha over twice z is what I had. Um, 1 over beta 3 over 2 is equal to alpha over 2 square root beta c over pi 1 over delta q 1 over beta 3 over 2 and when you plug in alpha you'll see that all the things cancel away and you're going to be left with that the average energy is equal to 1 over twice beta is equal to half kt. Alright, so you know, like I said, I, I wasn't very thorough on that. I'm just showing you the steps and how to do it. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.